Hello, everybody. So we're going to be doing some vocabulary today. So if you're watching on my YouTube channel, guess what? You're going to be able to see everything that I have right up on my screen. I'm going to put the post-it note right up there. We're going to go through some random vocabulary. So what I'm going to say is this. We're just going to see how long this goes, and we're going to be putting some more content like this up here. So please do hit that like button, hit subscribe, and Remember, I do have a new TikTok channel, so go type in Stu Jacobson. If you find me on TikTok, make sure you hit that follow button, like a couple videos, hit that favorite, and share it with anyone that might be trying to pass a real estate exam. So let's talk about a couple things. So the first thing that I want to talk about is avulsion. So what is avulsion? So avulsion is going to be a tearing away of land. So you're basically, it's like erosion, so avulsion is like erosion, but what happens is this. Avulsion is going to be sudden or violent. It's not going to be something that is going to be gradual, like erosion. So I'm going to actually put that in there because we're mentioning it. So we're talking about avulsion and we're talking about erosion, right? Because avulsion is the sudden violent tearing away of land, whereas the erosion is going to be when it's gradually taken away. When it's something that, like, over time, we're like, oh, man, this used to be 10 feet here, and now there's all of a sudden five. With avulsion, that's more so like, oh, my God, we had a whole backyard, and then there was a landslide, and we don't got a whole backyard. Now we got a half a backyard. So avulsion is going to be due to some natural disaster, typically. So that is the difference between avulsion and erosion. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about, it's like talking about a life estate because I think students get this really confused. So life estate, and I'm also going to type in here, I'm going to put my other post-it note up here. I love me some post-it notes. So I'm going to also type in here um, what a freehold estate is. So bonus, you're going to be getting that. A freehold estate is going to be ownership. So when you own property, you have a freehold estate, okay? When you own property, it's also said that you have the full bundle of rights, right? So remember what the bundle of rights were, okay? This is what's enjoyed by a property owner. You have the right to use, the right to possess, the right to transfer, exclude, and encumber. So, so what does all that mean? So you have the right to use the property in any lawful manner, shape, or form that you might, you know, want to do. So uh, guess what? You know, I uh, wanted to expand my driveway. It was a okay for me to do that as long as I didn't do a couple things. So I could use my property that way, right? I could, you know, get a permit and put a pool on my property, right? So that's the right to use it. To possess it means that, like, it's mine, right? It, it's no one else's. So what happens is the right to possess it, right, is the right to occupy it, the right to solely be the one to uh, actually be there, right? So the use and possession. And what's funny is this. The right to use and possess, that's actually what is transferred in a leasehold estate. So when you have a leasehold or less than freehold estate, you actually have the right to use and possess the property, right? Occupy it, be there. Okay. Um, then we have transfer, exclude, and encumber. So transfer means that you have the right to transfer as long as lawful, legal, and with whatever ownership you have, it's within those boundaries, right? The right to exclude, I get to say that my neighbors can't come here. If I have a neighbor I don't like, I could say, no, sir, no, ma'am, you can't come here. You can't be here. You can't be in the stew pool, okay? I could say that. And also to encumber the property. So what does that mean? Encumbering means I could put weans on it. I could, um, you know, uh, I, I could do anything that might lessen the value of the property. I, I could do that as a property owner. I could put deed restrictions on it. That's like an encumbrance, okay? Because it is something that is, a, you know, limits the full value of the property, right? Because if you put any kind of limitation on it, like a lien, you know, an easement. I could put an easement on my property as well. So I have the right to allow someone to get an easement appurtenant. So we're going through a lot of definitions here. And I just kind of wanted to 
like I said, do the stream of conscious with you where we're talking through some of these things. So the right to encumber would be that. So now in a life estate, I have all those things. I have the right to use, possess, transfer, exclude, and encumber. So Stu, you could transfer a life estate. Sure, you could definitely do that. But a life estate is based on the person who lives there. So let's say that Joe gave me a life estate. Well, if Joe gives me a life estate, it's a situation where it's going to be based on my life. So when I pass away, it's going to be a situation where the life estate no longer exists. So I wouldn't be able to will it in a life estate. Now, there's also another type of life estate, and I'm going to write it in here, called a life estate per ultra V. A life estate per ultra V. So now that changes it a little bit, okay? So remember when I said to you a life estate is based on my life, okay? A life estate per ultra V is based on the life of another. So like if Joe said to me, hey, Stu, we're going to give you this property and it's going to be based off of Cynthia's life. Well, it's a situation where when Cynthia passes away, then my ownership of the property is going to go away. It's not going to be there anymore. So that's when it's poor Ultra V. That means it's based on the life of another. So Cynthia would be that other. When it's just a life estate, that would be a situation where it's going to be based on my life. So that was a good one. I like that because that got a lot of things kind of out of the way. Let's talk about a net lease, shall we? Because I think that a net lease is something that, you know, you typically don't hear. Now, some of your instructors might refer to it as a triple net lease. There's different types of net leases, okay? There's different types of net leases. I'm not going to go into the specifics. Why? Your book might, your instructors might go down those roads. I'm not going to differentiate them for you. So for the purposes of the exam, a net lease and a triple net lease are going to be the same. That's where the tenant is going to pay the taxes, maintenance, and insurance on top of typically a flat fee. Now, what's really interesting about this is when you might see this and why this happens, right? So what I want to ask the question of is this, have any of you ever worked a retail job like a, a Best Buy, a Target, um, a Walmart, okay? Uh, I know in my uh, late teen years, I worked at uh, Verizon, okay? That was a popular hotspot for a lot of me and my friends. You know, we worked at the wireless stores, it was good money for what we did. Um, and I want you to think to those moments where you've worked there. So if you haven't, I'm going to tell you a little secret about it. Most of those stores, those standalone stores, even in strip malls and things like that, like Best Buy's, Walmart's, Target's, those are net leases. Now, if you were working there, you probably realized that those stores had their own maintenance crew. They had their own people who worked on the physical structure of the building. There's a couple reasons why. Well, number one, they get to write off that work, right? So Verizon would basically pay, uh, I think one of the companies that we use was CB Richard Ellis, you know, but there might've been like another company or a corporate number you would call as an employee instead of going to the landlord. Like you wouldn't go, oh, hey, call the landlord up. The bathroom's broke. You would call Target, you know, corporate, Verizon corporate. Because what happens is those companies either outsource or they have their own maintenance crew. They write that off and it's a situation where they manage the maintenance as well. So that what happens is they don't have to wait for people and also it's a write-off. So that's why it's a net lease. In a net lease, they're going to be able to write off a lot of those expenses, the taxes. So they basically get all the benefits of owning the property without having to own the property, right? So they get the tax benefits without having to own it. Because think about this, uh, you know, I think to sports authority that closed, what was it, maybe like five, six years ago now, and they would have had to, if they owned the actual properties, they would have had to have gotten to a point where what they would have done was uh, offload all that real estate that they had. Well, they didn't have to do that because it's a situation where um, they didn't own any real estate, so they just ended the leases early, right? And now the landlord is responsible for either getting a new tenant or 
selling that commercial space. So a net lease is when the tenant is going to be paying the taxes, maintenance, and insurance. This is usually going to be a situation where it is the same as a triple net lease for the purposes of the test. Next one that I want to talk about is going to be a chain of title. A chain of title. Let me just take a quick sip. Give me two seconds. Sorry about that. Had to wet the whistle. But a chain of title. Now, I'm also going to talk about with this an abstract of title. Okay? Because I think people get these two confused. So... These are actual searches that the title company is going to be doing when, they, uh, when they're going ahead and uh, basically doing the title work for the home. So they're going to want to know both of these reports. They're going to want to know the information on these because they tell different tales. Okay, So the chain of title, that's going to show you all of the previous owners on a piece of property. So going back to the beginning, all the way till the end. Okay. Um, the abstract of title, that's going to show you different things. That's going to show you all the things affecting title. So it will show you encumbrances, liens on the property, if there are any known easements. Those are all going to be in the abstract of title. But they're not going to show up in the chain of title and vice versa. Like the first owner on the piece of property is going to show up in the chain, but it won't show up in the abstract. The abstract is going to show you all the liens on the property, but the chain won't. So both of those are important when they're doing any kind of title paperwork. So, ooh, you know what? And I did mention something that I always want to go over. I always like talking about easements, right? So an easement is a type of encumbrance. Remember we were talking that encumbrances are liabilities on property? So an easement is going to be a type of. It's, gonna, it's going to be a type of encumbrance. So think of it this way, right? Um, if I said to you, you know, ice cream is my favorite dessert and my favorite flavor of ice cream is Cookie Monster, okay? Which is a true story. <laughs> so what happens is Cookie Monster is a flavor of ice cream. An easement is an encumbrance, right? It's a type of encumbrance. So if you sit there and go, oh, they're the same, it's like I said, the ice cream and the cookie monster. Or if I said ice cream and cookie dough, right? That is going to be the general category and then a type of, you know? So you can have other things under encumbrance like uh, liens, okay? Those are also encumbrances. Encroachments, those are going to be encumbrances as well, okay? But an easement is a type of encumbrance where someone has a permanent right to use someone else's property. Now, without going into each and every easement, because I don't think I'm going to do that in this video, um, it's a situation where I think that I just want you to know that it is a permanent right to use someone else's property. That's enough for the definition of easement, the general terminology of what it is. Um, because I think that a lot of people use what I call, uh, <laughs> what I call like when definitions. And let me explain to you what a like when definition is and why it isn't that great to use it. Okay. So when I ask students, what is an easement? They say, oh, it's like when someone has to get to their home to access theirs. Like that is a great example of an easement. But it isn't what it is, right? Think about that, right? Because if that's your definition in your head, your like when definition, what happens is you have an example in your head of what it is. And then what you're looking to do is basically extract out a definition from that and then get to a point where you're going to take that definition and apply it. It's sometimes really cumbersome and really hard to do that when you have a definition where it's a like when definition. So I always tell my students, hey, you know, try not to, try not to, if you could, have a like when definition. So when you're looking through these and you say, huh, what is an easement? If you start with it's like when, it may not be a great definition. You might want to say, hmm, is there a way that I could maybe tighten that up a little bit? Is there a way I could kind of tweak that, make it a little better? That would be a good thing. So... 
been talking about this now, another type of encumbrance, because I think that I have to kind of mention it, is going to be a lien, right? A lien. So a lien is basically going to be a situation where that is, uh, what's funny is that I always hear Joe from Prep Agent in my head saying, lean money, lean money, lean money. It's a financial claim against a property. It's basically a situation where um, you have, okay, you have a situation where you're going to owe money on your property. Now, it's sometimes going to be classified as one of two things, and we're going to put it up here, specific or general. You really should know the difference between specific liens and general liens because that's going to help you on your exam. You'll definitely see this terminology. So a specific lien, a specific lien is going to be a lien that goes against one property. So like mortgage, real estate, property taxes, all specific, all specific. And then a general lien, a general lien is going to go on everything you owe. So um, something that would be an example of a general lien would be like your, if there was a lawsuit against you, you lost a lawsuit, um, it would go against all the property that you own, all the real and personal property that you own. So that is the difference between specific and general. And I'm going to ask you again, if you are watching this um, on YouTube, uh, please hit the like, hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to get to 100,000 subscribers. I don't know how long it's going to take me. It might be an old man in the grave, but I'm trying to get there. So now, and every little bit helps. So don't think that, you know, ah, maybe not doing this. No, 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 no. Will help me. Try to do it for me. Next one that we're going to talk about is list pendants. List pendants. That is legal action pending on a property. <laughs> So, excuse me, when we're talking about a list pendants, it's legal action pending on a property. Now, do we know what it is? Do we know why it's there? Why the lawsuit's happening? Why there's legal action pending on the property? We really don't. We don't know what it is because it's a situation where it's just a very general term. That's like me saying to you, my buddy got arrested last night. And then you're saying he got arrested. What did he get arrested for? Well, there's a lot of things that could fall into that category. So the same thing as me saying, hey, someone got arrested for something. That's very general. So a list pendants is like there's a lawsuit for something on the property. And then you say what? Well, I, I, I don't know. Or it's something that with just saying list pendants, it's the same as saying, hey, someone got arrested. You don't really have more information on that. There's just some sort of lawsuit pending. It, could it be for a foreclosure? Could it be for a situation where there's uh, a homeowners association that's, you know, there's outstanding balances due? Yeah, absolutely. Could be. Could be. You know, don't know. So now let's talk about, I talked about police getting arrested. Not exactly the same, but I do want to talk about what police power is. Now that's one of our, one of our government powers, and that is the abbreviation we use is PEEP, police power, okay, eminent domain, SG, okay, taxation, and that's it. Yeah, I didn't, actually, I should put taxation between, I am going to do that. I'm going to put taxation so that it makes sense. So police power, let's start with that. And I think we are going to go through each one of these. And I know I spelled eminent domain, eminent wrong. Um, I'm not, not the best speller. And I also know that I spelled that cheat wrong. <laughs> it's one of those days. So police power, what is that? That's basically the government's right to regulate the land in the community. Basically, they have the right to zone, to set building codes, basically say, hey, you can't build a skyscraper here. Hey, you can build a skyscraper here, right? So police powers are different depending on where you are in the country, you know, depending on where you are would dictate what your police power zoning regulations are going to be. Guess what? I live at the Jersey Shore, okay? So my community really doesn't allow skyscrapers to be built, right? There's no real, like, 45-story buildings in my area. Also, I live on an aquifer, so if you know what that is, 
really can't have massive buildings. And that's the reason why they actually did that. And, and as you can see, they give some thought to it for traffic patterns, congestion, things like that. That's why the government has the right to do that kind of stuff. And then you have something like New York City where they can handle a much more densely populated uh, you know, area. So you could put a 45-story building there and you could be able to manage it and handle it because they have the infrastructure to be able to do that. And also, too, space comes at a premium in New York City, right? So what happens is they wouldn't put a single-family home in the middle of New York City because, number one, it would be absolutely a waste of space because we need to just build up because its space is coming at a premium, and it's a situation where it doesn't make sense, right? So that's why each area has their own rules, regulations, what you can and what you can't do, okay? Next, let's talk eminent domain. So eminent domain, this is the government's right to take your property. This is the government's right to take your property for a higher and greater public use. So that's the kicker there, okay? So they have to take it for a public use. They can't just take it and say neener, neener, okay? There has to be some sort of justification behind it. It has to be like, look, we have to use it for this, and it's a higher and greater public use than what you're currently using it for. So they can't take it for private use, meaning they can't take your property and go, look, we want to take it so that we could sell it to, you know, uh, Miguel over here, who's going to be building, you know, uh, a ton of skyscrapers. Why did I use the name Miguel? Because my, my son's godfather's name is Miguel. So Miguel, if you're watching this, highly doubt you are. Hello. Uh, <laughs> so eminent domain, they have to use it for uh, public use. They have to use the property for a higher and greater public person purpose. So eminent domain is the government's right. They exercise that through the process of condemnation so what they're going to do is they're actually going to go ahead and condemn the property say nope 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 we are condemning it because we are exercising our right of eminent domain they again they have the right to do that because eminent domain gives them the right to condemn it they have to meet the criteria of higher and greater public use once they do that part of the process of condemnation is that they have to compensate the property owner for it they have to compensate them for it so we did police power. We did eminent domain. We talked about condemnation kind of in the same breath. So let's talk about taxation. This is the one where it's basically everyone kind of knows what it is. It's the government's right to tax you. You own property, they can tax you. You know, just like they could tax you in, you know, uh, if you're buying if you're buying something and they have a sales tax in that county, in that area, in that city, in that town, right? And sometimes they have different rules and regulations about the sales taxes and things like that. There might be certain towns that have a surcharge, certain towns that have additional charges, certain towns that have less charges. It really depends on the circumstances. So the government has the right to tax you. And the last one here is we're going to talk about SG, okay? SG. So what is SG? That's when someone dies without a will, with no heirs, no next of kin, and basically what happens is this. They're going to go ahead and uh, take the property. So when the government, okay, when the government is basically taking the property reactively because it's a situation and circumstance where um, you died without a will and you have no heirs, then what happens is it will just escheat back to the state. So that all being said, I hope this helped you because this is something that I'm going to try to do from time to time. I know I have a bunch of other videos on here. So, hey, guess what? If you're new, if you're finding me for the first time, definitely check some of my other stuff out. Um, I have over 300 videos that is going to help you pass your real estate exam. Thank you very much. Remember, hit that like button, hit subscribe. If you're watching on TikTok or anything else, hit that follow button. I will see you all real soon.